we've seen how to go from the linear kinematic equations to the angular kinematic equations. And now we're going to see the analog to force with regards to rotational motion, and that's called torque. So torque, which we represent with the lowercase tau, And so torque is the analog to force in rotational motion. So force was F equals MA nominally or force is F equals MA in the situation where acceleration is constant, really the time derivative of momentum with respect to time. And so you can imagine what the analog for force would be in rotational motion. So in rotational motion, instead of a mass, we have a moment of inertia. And instead of an acceleration, we have an angular acceleration. Or if we want to think about the case where the angular acceleration is, or the, the moment of inertia is not constant, then this would be the time derivative of the angular momentum with respect to time. So this is one interpretation of the torque. And now I'm going to show you a different one. So we've seen that torque is I alpha if I is constant or time derivative of angular momentum if it's not. I is a function of time. But there's another interpretation of torque. So torque is also the cross product of the distance away that you're applying the force from the axis of rotation multiplied with the cross product times that force. So for example, if you had, let's say you had a rod that was rotating about this axis, maybe I'll pick a, a better axis. Let's say you have this rod here and it's free to rotate in that direction and you apply a force F here. Then this vector is R. And if you wanted to do your right hand rule, you would get so R is in the plus I hat direction, force is in the plus J hat direction. So that would give you a K hat direction. So in the positive Z direction for your torque. So your torque is going to be directed out of the page. And we denote, so 
as an aside, vectors into the page or out of the page are a circle with a dot in the middle and vectors going into the page have a circle with an X in them. So your torque is pointing up out of the page. So if you curled your hand in the direction of, so put your thumb in the direction of the torque and whatever way your fingers curl is the direction of the motion, which makes sense intuitively. And that's what I've drawn here with this arrow. So now we have two completely different representations for torque. So we have I alpha and we have R cross F. Now, a lot of the times if you're solving problems or you're trying to solve some real life application, um, being able to equate these two uh, expressions can be very powerful. So let's think of the example. Um, so let's say you've got this bolt. Maybe I'll do just a top down view. So you've got your wrench. Expertly drawn. And you're trying to, let's say, loosen this bolt. So if you wanted to loosen the bolt, you want your torque. So I guess it would depend on if it's a right handed bolt or a left handed bolt, uh, but let's assume a right handed bolt. Um, then if you wanted to loosen the bolt, you would want your torque to point up. So we want torque to be out of the page if loosening so our our vector is already pointed this way so we would need to apply a force in this direction now let's say you knew the moment of inertia of the of the um, wrench. And let's just assume that it is a let's just assume that it's a rod. that you're rotating about the end. So it would look something like this, where L is the length of the rod, and let's assume you know the force that you can apply You can solve for alpha by setting your two expressions for torque equal to each other. And so from our right hand rule, we already know that this is going to be in the k hat direction, the r cross f, and our angular acceleration is also in the k hat direction. So I'm just going to disregard the, the vectors and our cross product 
the R and the F are perpendicular to each other. So you can just write it like this. Let's replace, oops. I guess we'll write it out. Okay. So now R was the length of the wrench. Moment of inertia was one third M L squared. So one of your L terms goes away. And if you wanted to solve for alpha, you would get F three F over M L. So just a quick example to show you how you can use the two expressions for torque, set them equal to each other, and use that to solve some equations. So I've introduced you to the idea of torque and the two expressions for torque and shown you a quick example, and we'll do some further examples in another video. This has been a Dr. Strassbau lecture. Keep the credentials. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications.